Hey YouTubers, got a real simple message for you today. Um, so many people in America and probably elsewhere believe that if you are a good person, you're going to heaven. You know, they say, oh, well, I never murdered anybody. Uh, you know, as long as I'm not hurting anybody, I believe I'm a good person. I'm going to heaven. Well, we'll take you back to the beginning. Back to Genesis 3. Uh, this is in the Garden of Eden. And this is where man was tempted. Uh, now, God set, you know, Adam and Eve in the garden and he gave them one rule. He said, do not eat of or do not touch the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. One rule. That's all he gave them. They were deceived into breaking the one rule. So even though they were deceived into breaking the one rule, they were held accountable. And because they broke that one rule, even though they were deceived, they were thrown out of paradise. So you have to understand that if one uh, act of rebellion against God is worthy of throwing them entirely out of paradise, what makes you think that being a good person <laughs> is going to let you into paradise if God is going to throw Adam and Eve out for one infraction against the law? Okay, uh, If you go to Numbers 20, you'll find that uh, God told uh, Moses to speak to the rock and water would come forth. Like he already did it once where he struck the rock with his rod and water came forth for the uh, Israelites that came out of Egypt as part of the Exodus. But in the second instance of this, he told him to just speak to the rock and the water would come forth. And Moses sinned against the Lord. He struck the rock when he was told to only speak to the rock. And because of this sin, because of this one infraction of the law, Moses was not allowed to enter paradise. He was not allowed to enter the promised land. So you have to understand that, you know, the New Testament says that if you break one law, you're guilty of breaking the whole law. So what is it that can redeem us back to God if he's so holy that one act of rebellion against him is enough to throw you out of paradise? Don't forget, it only took one sin of pride for Lucifer to be thrown out of paradise. All right, so if God's standard is so high that he threw Adam and Eve out of paradise, out of the Garden of Eden for one infraction of the law, what makes anybody think that they're worthy to go to heaven? Because one lie, one act of, you know, theft, you know, stealing, one, uh, you know, one of the commandments is to even honor the, honor your mother and father. If you even break that, you've broken one of the laws and you've broken all the law. You know, the Bible says that none are righteous, no, not one. So there is nothing that we can do in this flesh to meet God's standard. So what did God do to meet that standard? Uh, everybody should know this. John 3.16, he sent his only son to die for the sins of the world. And Jesus lived the perfect life that none of us can live. You know, you and I could never live even 50% of the perfection that Jesus lived because he lived without sin. He met the standard that God had set. And... When you, when you look at it through the picture of the Old Testament, you have to understand that in Israel, the high priest would go into the temple once a year and he would make a sacrifice to cover the sins of all the nation. And that's exactly what Jesus did by shedding his blood, by being the Passover lamb. You know, he, he presented himself as the perfect sacrifice. And the Bible says that without the shedding of blood, there is no remission of sin. So because of Jesus said, shed blood and because of his perfect life, we can now claim his righteousness as our own. You know, by believing in him, trusting in him, confessing him as Lord and Savior, you know, believing in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you know, then you can take him on as your covering. You know, if you come before the throne of God as you are, He's going to see a filthy, disgusting sinner. And the same way that he put Adam and Eve out of the garden, he's going to put you out of paradise. But because of what Jesus did, he can cover you with his blood. He can cover you with uh, his righteousness. And instead of seeing you, God the Father would see his son who lived the perfect, righteous life. That's what the gospel is all about. 
you know, when you accept Jesus and you walk in his ways and you uh, accept him as Lord, Master, Savior of your life, that's what happens. You become covered where God sees his son, Jesus Christ, his perfect son, instead of seeing you who's a sinner. Remember, he threw Adam and Eve out for one infraction, one sin. So one sin, one lie, one uh, lusting after a woman, one rebellion against your mother and father is enough to keep you out of heaven. So you must have that covering of Jesus Christ. So not only do you have to believe in him as the son of God, that God raised him from the dead, you have to confess your sins. You have to come into alignment with his ways. You know, the Bible says that, uh, uh, I think it's Matthew seven twenty one. He says, not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of he kingdom of heaven, but those who uh, perform the will of God, you know, those who do the will of God. And the will of God is not only to, you know, believe on the one that God sent, you know, his son, Jesus Christ, but also to walk in righteousness. There's a proverb that says, he who confesses and forsakes his sin will find mercy. So not only do you have to confess and agree that sin is sin, you have to turn away from it. You have to forsake it. You know, you can't continue walking in, uh, you know, the old things, the old man, the old life. You know, I can't continue to go back to the bar and get drunk all the time. I can't go sleeping around. I can't do all these things uh, because that's not in alignment with God's teaching, with Jesus' teaching. So not only do you have to believe in him and have faith in him, but you have to follow after him. You know, the Bible says that uh, my sheep follow my voice and they follow me. So if you're going to be one of his sheep, if you're going to be one that can be covered by him, you have to follow his voice. The reason that he came back was to restore the relationship that Adam and Eve used to have in the garden. You know, they would walk with God, talk with God. The veil was torn you know, by Jesus' sacrifice so that that relationship could be restored. So you could walk with God, talk with God. So not only is it about believing in Him, but it's about following Him. And most people that call themselves Christians today, have never even read this book. You know, when I first got saved, it was because I read this book. But first, I read a book about hell. And when I realized that I was a sinner, that, you know, my infractions of the law were deserving of death and hell. Then I came into agreement with Jesus and said, all right, I need you as my savior. I need you. I beg you to save me from this hell. Because hell, so many people just kind of put it in the back of their mind or they write it off as some kind of fantasy. But it's eternal. And it's not just separation from God like so many preachers would tell you. It's eternal torment, it's fire, it's torture. Because you have to understand that if you, re if you reject God, God created you for fellowship. You know, He created you for fellowship to love Him. And if you reject that, think of it like if you were in His shoes. You know, if someone rejects you and the only, uh, the only provision that you made to be restored to that person... Well, if, if you reject that, then what do you expect? I mean, he's going to turn you away, and hell is a place where evil has full reign, where Satan has full reign to, to, to take out all his anger towards God on you. You know, think about that. All the anger that the devil has towards God, he can't touch God, so he's going to take that out on you for eternity if you don't get right and get covered by Jesus Christ. So when I came to that realization that I was headed for hell, I changed my path real quick. And there's no better way to figure out how to walk the way that Jesus wants you to walk unless you read this word and do it. So it's not about being a good person. It's never been about being a good person. You know, Jesus said, uh, why do you call me good? No one is good except for God. You know, and not only was he saying that God was good, he was also calling himself good. So I'll tell you, good people go to hell all the time. Good people go to hell every day. But unless you get covered by Jesus Christ, unless you come back into that relationship where you can walk with him and talk with him, 
then that covering might not be there. So you need to check yourself, make sure you're right, and get on track because time is so short. And you don't want to spend eternity regretting this missed opportunity. So accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior. It, Lord implies servitude. So serve Him and accept His sacrifice and get restored back to a right relationship with God in Jesus' name. That's all I got. I hope you act if you haven't done it already.